I got sick with pneumonia in January 2018 after my husband and I returned from a vacation in Europe. When I first came down with what turned out to be pneumonia, I had symptoms that I thought might have been a cold, might have been a flu. I started out, I did have a fever. The fever was, it would fluctuate between 101 and 103, which was kind of on the high side for anything that I was used to. But I had a cough, I had shortness of breath, I had a headache. And a couple of days went by, it was about the third day that I was really convinced that I had the flu. I did a virtual doctor appointment. I thought I was acting on this whole thing and the doctor thought I had the flu as well and she prescribed Tamiflu, which I took. I mostly slept for a couple of days after that. But eventually on day five, when I woke up and my cough had become so painful and I was now coughing up blood, I knew that the time had come to visit the hospital. I realized I needed to seek medical care, partially because the cough was so painful, but because I was coughing up blood, I actually dragged myself to the living room and said to my husband, I think we have a problem here. I'm now coughing up blood. He said, we're going to the hospital. My husband is a retired firefighter and he knew I couldn't get to the front door of our apartment and our apartment was at the end of a very long hall. So he rigged up our office chair, which has wheels on it, and put a belt around his waist and pulled me all the way down that hall into the elevator to the lobby where I'm sure I probably scared the other people that lived in our condo because I hadn't been out of bed, showered, brushed my hair, done anything with myself in a week. And that's how I got to the hospital. Um, I was a little obstinate. I didn't want to go in an ambulance. So that was the workaround that he came up with, but it worked. <laughs> I was in the intensive care unit for a week. So when it got to be about day three and the medications that they were giving me started to kick in, I was feeling better. But it took several weeks after that to be 100% back to what I needed to be to function again. So it was a long drawn out affair. Having atrial fibrillation combined with pneumonia made for a complicated treatment and recovery. And I learned as I was going through all of this from my doctors that there are other underlying conditions that can make pneumonia treatment much more difficult. Things like chronic lung disease, for example, or those who have compromised immune systems when you add things on top of the thing that you already have, everything becomes more difficult. And in my case, that was certainly what happened to me. I was vaccinated against pneumonia when I got sick. I got vaccinated in 2017 when I turned 65. The thing that I learned from the doctors, which was critical in all of this, was they told me because of the combination of atrial fibrillation and pneumonia, had I not gotten that first vaccine, I wasn't gonna make it. Having pneumonia has had a significant impact on my life. I am bound and determined to tell this story and educate others on the importance of both vaccination and awareness of health issues and taking really good care of the preventive part of maintaining yourself. I'm 71 years old and I know I have a lot of things that I still want to do. What I'd like people to take away from this about pneumonia is it is a serious condition. Don't take it lightly. Don't think that you're gonna beat it. You might, but if there's a way to help yourself, you need to take that and in my case, and you know, I'm sure there are others just like me, having that pneumonia vaccination was a lifesaver for me. According to the doctors, my AFib or atrial fibrillation combined with that pneumonia, I was walking towards the light that I didn't want to walk towards. And I think that going forward, you know, I, I'm very, very, tuned into the other vaccinations that 
all of us should be looking at and not be afraid to, to take because I can look in the mirror every day and I'm still there.